I'll tell you some things that you'll remember as I say them probably. Um, one, what, one thing I notice is it, we refer to it as gym. And if you're teaching with me, we'll, we'll hammer that into you that it's physical education. So try, try to start getting that into your head because that helps with teachers and it helps with kids too. Uh, and that's a habit because that's what I was, it was called when I was in school too. When's gym, right? But it's funny that when we talk about gym, we only think of this place for the class. And then you get into issues when a school is overflowing with kids, they only have so much gym. They almost they can only schedule this so much. So then kids are missing out on their phys ed minutes because they think it's the only place they can do it, right? So I bet you when you guys were young, you would come into the gym and just like hammer out laps. Do you remember doing that? For sure, right? Because what did kids want to do when they came into the gym? Like grade two, man. They come into a place like this after they're going, oh, and they want to move, right? And you know what we all did after we ran a few laps? Sat down. So we sat down in the middle, and then we'd listen to the teacher for a while, right? And the teacher would do what? Talk. Talk and tell us what we're going to do that day. Like Captain Obvious, why don't we just do it, right? I was the kid who was going like this, going, <laughs> can we not just move again? We only get in here once a week, and you're telling us what we're going to do. Why don't we just do it, right? Because that's what we're used to. That's what I was taught too. Probably as you got older, it'd be like, okay, here's what we're going to learn today. Actually, let's do this. Uh, did any of you play badminton growing up? Yes. Yeah? Let's do this. Let's talk about, uh, we're going to create a badminton unit. Oh, my marker even works. Just off the top of our heads, and we're going to talk about this for a minute. Let's say it's uh, six one-hour classes. Okay, so we have six classes and we're going to do badminton. And I know if this is assignment, like how could we throw this off the top of our head right now? It's kind of tough, but I want you guys to talk for a second or just think to yourself if, you, if you'd rather not. And, and I'm going to ask us in like 30 seconds or less, some of the basic key things we're going to want to cover if we had six classes, six one-hour lessons with say grade five or six kids. Right? Um, okay, so six lessons. I don't care what order they're in. What are some of the key things? Like lesson one. Lesson one, what do you guys think? What, what can, I, can I share something with you now? I, I, I typed, and, and I, I can prove it because I'll show you. I typed what you guys would say here. I predicted your lessons. Can I read them to you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is true. I have it, I have it on here. Um, first lesson would be court dimension, ready position, grip. So I'm pretty close. Court dimensions, right? I said ready position and grip, but that deals with equipment. I didn't really talk about score. And then I had serve as my second class. I had overhead clear as my third class. I only had five. So you guys said returns, but I had overhead clear. And I had drop shot and I had smash. And I said you'd do them all for one class. How did I know that? Yeah. Like, because when I was in grade five, if I did badminton, that's what I did. And then when I went to grade six, that's what I did. And then when I went to grade seven and eight, if we did badminton, that's what I did. Does that make sense? It makes sense that we did that, but is, why would we do that? Like, do we, do we say, okay, we're doing this in grade three language arts, and then next year we'll do the same thing, and then next year, do you see why kids maybe aren't so interested sometimes? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the way a lot of people are still going about their business, it's come in, do a warm up, pick the skill we're gonna do, and then practice the skill, and then at the end, if there's time, we'll play. Okay. Now the problem with that is um, kids don't understand why they need to do a drop shot or a clear, or they don't. I mean, they don't understand the concept of badminton. They just know they have to line up and do that skill. Now it could be volleyball. If I had a volleyball lessons here and I said, "Give me a volleyball unit. First day, court dimensions, lines, rules, scoring. Second day." 
forearm pass or bump, third day overhead pass or set, serving would be on a day, and then maybe we'd get to blocking and, and, and attacking, right? That's, that's how our unit would be. See, we're trying to get away from that now. Okay, so we're trying to get to a point where we're actually, the, the idea in the curriculum is now it's called uh, teaching games for understanding. Have you heard of that? Any of you? Okay. I hopefully you will down the road. So we're going to do a few things in a few minutes, but I want to talk about it first. Um, teaching games for understanding is basically just that. Give them games to play and let them figure it out. Right? Remember I said the kids that sit in the middle of the gym, it's like, just let me go and I'll figure it out. Okay? We as teachers want to control too much that way. So a teaching games for understanding idea would be, all right, I'll show you some this after or this class that shows how to uh, teach kids to play net games, which is badminton, right? Net wall games is one theme of teaching games for understanding. It's set up in themes, so you're not teaching a sport anymore. We should not be teaching a sport in phys ed. We should not be doing a unit of a sport in phys ed anymore. I'll help you. Don't worry. Okay, with young kids, you should never be teaching a grade one kid a game of soccer. Because that's a, that's a territorial, they're called, like these are funny names, but you'll, you'll see these, this wording in curriculum now. That it's actually, the lady who wrote all the curriculum from grade one to nine has followed the teaching for games, games for understanding approach, right? Territorial invasion games like soccer, what other games are like soccer? Football? Basketball? Hockey. Kickball? No. Nope. Hockey. Hockey? See, all those games, you're taking an object and you're trying to move it somewhere else and put it somewhere. Right? So why do we spend six weeks teaching badminton? Why don't we have badminton, or sorry, basketball? Why would we do basketball one day, soccer the next, lacrosse the next, floor hockey the next, all this, 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 and then they understand the concept of how to play that game. And if they've never played basketball before, they still know how to play it. Relatively, right? Net wall games, we have badminton, we have tennis, we have pickleball, we have volleyball. What's the same in all of those? Start a rally with a serve, and until when the rally ends, someone gets a point, and then you start again. You have to cover the floor, and in badminton, remember we talked about the drop shot, when I start playing with somebody, against someone, I want to send them to the back of the court, and then when they send it back to me, do I want to send it back to where they are? No. So I'm going to play some games with you today with a tennis ball. That's all we'll use. And you'll learn how to play badminton. It's kind of weird to think about, but it's, it happens. Okay. Another one is target games. Now that's something for very young kids. Um, beanbag toss. Um, horseshoes. Things like that. That's where you start with primary grade ones and twos and all kinds of other movement things too, right? Those are games they can understand. The basic concepts are simple. It's one person does something at one time. There's not a lot of other stuff going on, right? You could teach a grade one to try to throw a bean bag into a, a hula hoop. Okay, you can't teach grade one to play soccer. Have you ever seen it? <laughs> About it. We have programs started for kids in grade three, or age three and four and five, playing full games of hockey. It's absurd, right? Full games of soccer, they don't have a clue of spatial awareness. It's like, follow the puck, follow the puck. They can't. <laughs> Wouldn't their time be better used if it was like, let's play a game of one-on-one -on -one hockey, or two-on-two, -two, or two-on-one, or three-on-two, right? See, teaching games, the idea is small-sided games. The great thing about that, if you weren't the kid in phys ed who really loved it, you probably sat around a lot and didn't touch the object much. That sucks, right? Could you imagine you play one big game of kickball, which is a great game that you can get to, but there's kids that go for a 45 minute period that would never touch the ball, unless they kicked it and then they ran halfway and were out. Why would they want to come back to phys ed class? Why would this approach, everyone plays, like if we want to play kickball, eventually we'd get to that. But there's a game you could play where it's two on two. Okay, you two against us two. I'm going to kick this ball and I'm going to run to that 
pile on and back as many times as I can until you and your partner get that ball back in. Now, the kid who kicked the ball is enjoying themselves because they're getting to score points. Those other two are running the whole time, and so is that kid. And meanwhile, there's seven other games of it going on. You play it for 20 minutes, and they're all saying, time out, Mr. Lewis. Like, they're sweating, and they're red in the face, and every kid enjoyed themselves. And they all learned. Like, if I'm kicking that ball, am I going to kick it where those two kids are? Where would you kick it? Over their heads or so another way, right? There. You've learned one key thing to what's another type of game, striking games. Right? They play the game and then I bring them back in. I say, what'd you learn? Well, nothing. I just ran a lot. No, what'd you learn? Where'd you kick the ball? Well, I always kicked it over their heads. Right? They were over there, so I kicked it over there. Or they were standing there. They were both on that side, so I turned around and did this. Ha ha, see ya. Right? Then what did the other two, what did the kids in the field learn? What do you think? I know we haven't played that one, but I'll show you. They're, are they going to just stand still? Are they going to are they going to stand beside each other? Okay. So they're learning to cover as much area as they can, right? So we learn all that by playing games. Those are the main four, okay? But I, if if anything, you go into your schools and you intern and you try stuff. Try to set up four or five lessons in a row where the, out, the goal at the end is for them to understand a little bit of those four approaches, okay? Don't go into your school and say, I'm just going to teach them badminton like we talked about, which we would all set up, and I would have done it too as a new teacher. I would have done it six years ago as a teacher, okay? So, I mean, it's not wrong that people do that, but if we're still doing that in 15 years, then I would say that's wrong because our curriculum is trying to get us to do this.